I'm John Bullard. Welcome to the new teaching blog at johnbullard.com. We'll be looking at how to play classical music on the banjo. We'll be working with scales, arpeggios, learning some pieces, talking about how to read music on the five string banjo, and all that good stuff. But we'll also leave the door open for some other styles. So thanks for stopping by for the first lesson. Let's go ahead and dig in. Okay, let's get started with lesson one. We're going to be looking at a piece called Bore II from Bach's fourth cello suite for solo cello. This piece was originally written in E-flat major, and I've transposed it to D major for the banjo. You should have a PDF link right there to download this, and it's also included in my two books, Bach for the Banjo with Mel Bay Publications and The Classical Banjo, which is available on the website. This, record, this was recorded on my first CD called The Classical Banjo. Now let's dig into this piece a little bit further. The first thing I wanted to mention is that this is counterpoint, and that means there's two lines going on at the same time. Sometimes counterpoint is three or even four lines going on at the same time, but in this piece we really just have two. So the, the job here is to be able to hear two, two lines pretty much independently. Now there's some places where they sort of overlap, but for the most part there are two lines going on. So let's look at the A section and see what the top line sounds like. So the top line goes a bit like this. Okay, so that's what's going on in the top part. Now the, the bottom part, which for the most part is played with the thumb in this piece, so that's one way that it, you can help separate the two lines is the fact that you're, you'll be playing the bottom line with your thumb automatically gives it some separation. But let's hear what this bottom line sounds like. Okay, so let's look at ways that we can bring these two lines together but still hear them separately as well. One thing that's going to help is you should be playing the bottom line with your thumb or the bass line with your thumb and that will differentiate it from the top line just by the nature of the difference between your thumb pick and your finger pick. Um, but also you can you know intentionally bring out one or the other at different times. I'll play through the A, a section and try to exaggerate bringing out the bottom line. Now we could do the same thing with the top line and try to exaggerate that. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to mention about this piece that will help bring it to life a little bit is the idea of using some dynamic phrasing. Now this is a pretty short piece and there's not a whole lot you can do, but just a little bit of phrasing and dynamics actually adds a lot to something even as short as this. What I'm talking about is, let's say we start off the A section at what I would call uh, mezza forte, fairly loud but not, not overbearing, but pretty strong, like this. idea you could use is when you repeat that A section is to play that with a different phrasing or a different dynamic. So what I'll do here is I'll play the first time through sort of like I just did, but then the second time through I'm going to back down and try to be a little bit more quiet. So let's see what that sounds like. So 
So there's an, an idea, not written in stone, and you may not want to do it that way, but that's an idea and a tool that you can use. Now another idea for dynamics in a, in a short piece like this would be changing it up on the B section. So what I'll do is I'll play through the A section once and then go into the B section and change it up. What I'll do here is play the, the A section fairly strong and then when I get to the B section I'm going to lighten up and try to put a little more poignancy into the into the piece, a little more emotion uh, in that part. Let's see what that sounds like. Now maybe that wasn't quite enough. Let's see what it sounds like if we do that and really exaggerate it even more. And it'll be up to you to figure out where you want to fall with this, but um, a lot of times what we as players think is a shift in dynamics is not always heard quite as well by an audience. So sometimes you have to overdo it a little bit. So I'll try to overdo it a little bit this time and see what we get. things to help you bamp out this piece, maybe be a little more expressive with it, make it come to life a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and, and play the piece in its entirety and maybe you can get some ideas from that as well. So that was Bore 2. I hope that gave you some good ideas for working with phrasing and counterpoint. Some things that can really help a piece come alive and be a little more interesting to an audience. So thanks for stopping by for the first lesson. We'll pick it back up again soon. If you'll go on the website and sign up for my newsletter, I'll send out an announcement each time a new lesson is posted. So thanks again and we'll see you then.